Hey there, in this video I'm going to give you a guide on tessellations. I'm going to do this on the example of the model Bricks by Ilan Garibi. This is one folded model. And I'm going to also show you a slight variation which I just came up with while I was uh, drawing the crease patterns and thinking about how to best explain how this all works. Um, as you can see, this one has still um, binder claps attached because uh, when you fold this, uh, the paper has to get used to the shape. So what I just did is add these binder clips um, and let it stay for about a day now. And um, later I'll, I'll take these off, I guess, and we'll see how well it fits together already. And if it doesn't quite, I might just attach the binder clips again, dampen the paper a bit, and then let it dry in this shape again. So that's just a bit of a trick with tessellations, especially if they're like, um, I guess it's called 2.5D, where obviously it's three-dimensional, but um, not so much, you know, just giving it a bit of depth. So, um, okay, so this, uh, this is going to be a different instructional video than I usually do, because usually I just say, fold this paper, do all the creases, and then here you've got your finished model. But in this video, I want to explain how you can take a crease pattern for one molecule, which would be, you know, just one of these spaces, one of these, and then uh, assemble them to get one big tessellation. <clears throat> and for that, let's first study just one such module. You can see this is one of those small twisted squares, if you like. And if you take that apart, then uh, these are the creases that really matter. So I'm working on a square grid. This is 7 by 7. Um, I achieved that actually by um, folding an 8 by 8 grid and then cutting one leg length off on each side. This is one option of getting irregular grids. Um, and then here I've drawn in the creases in red. I hope you can see the difference between red and black. Red is um, mountain fold and black is valley fold. Um, the really uh, important difference is that these are different directions because with tessellations um, they can look interesting from both sides. So uh, what do these modules um, need to um, fulfill? What requirements do they have? So first of all, you'll see this is a square. And with a square, when you put many together, you can fill a space. So the, the shape of the molecule, of the, the starting paper size, needs to be regular so that you can fill a space. Obviously, there are many different shapes that um, that satisfy this property, but let's work with this square. So the second property is that if we collapse this, and I'll show in more detail how to do this later, but if we collapse this, this is again a square. And again with a square you can fill the whole space. So that's a property. Now more importantly though, you'll see that the whole edge of this paper is on the edge of the collapsed molecule. Can you see that? None of the edges are actually hidden inside somewhere. Now this is necessary because when you want to put together molecules, let's take two I guess, So when you want to put together two molecules, then you need to combine the edges so that in the end, if you'd actually glued these sheets together, it would still work, right? So suppose you had this, now you attach some tape all around, and then you still need to be able to unfold it. Um, okay, so the second property is that the whole edge is exposed on the edge of the collapsed molecule. Now, um, what else? If you, if you look at these two molecules that you combine, you'll see 
that the the creases all align. Can you see that? It's um, it's flat here. Then it goes up to the spike in both ways, and and then it combines again. Now if I put it here, again that works. Um, so because basically if you've got this uh, this crease, it can't just stop. You need to have a, a shape, a, a, some kind of construction that will allow you to go from, um, from one uh, crease to the next. And the easiest way of connecting to creases, obviously, is just if it's an extension of the other crease. So, um, actually, if I used two <laughs> molecules, like this green one, it wouldn't work. And I'll show you this by just going through this one. So I've only pre-creased the grid, and I've also marked the crease pattern, just for clarification. This is probably the video I did the most pre prep work for. And um, often I'd now just fold these in the air. But with tessellations, precision can be quite important. And usually um, in my videos, I don't go for great precision. But I thought I'd show you one technique of getting superb precision for um, tessellations if you want to do display models. So what I do is I use a bone folder. You can use um, an empty pen, for example, if you don't have a bone folder or a knitting needle, something like that. And I have a ruler. I have a steel ruler because I do cutting. But just for this, this um, pre-creasing in some ways, you can use any ruler you like. And then I just align the ruler so that I can pre-crease exactly where those extra off-grid creases are supposed to go. Um, this is especially interesting if you have quite intricate patterns. And I have done this, for example, with patterns by um, Eric Gierde, where, you know, there's more sophisticated shapes in it than here. And um, I've mostly done uh, triangle grid tessellations by Eric Gierde. And um, this one is a square one by Ilan Garibi, which, you know, I love this one too. So these are the, the off-grid uh, creases, and you can kind of see um, it's a bit shiny here now. Can you see that? The light is reflecting. So I've just um, added creases there. So this has two effects. The first is you can actually get perfect precision in where the crease lies, more so than if you just fold with um, your hands. And the second one is you can really, really guarantee that the crease stops exactly in the points where you want them to stop. So now that this is halfway pre-creased, um, you can just strengthen those creases by going along them again. So maybe this is something that's um, useful for you if you want to make great looking tessellations and also maybe if you sometimes have quite a big trouble in just with just folding in the air. So these are the off-grid creases. The other ones I haven't given any direction to yet but um, I don't want to worry about that too much. So then um, I'm actually going to turn around the paper because I think it's easier to collapse and you'll see that these are the important ones. The other ones have no direction and I'm just going to squeeze together um, the paper here right where I marked those black valley folds or from this side mountain folds. And then you'll see that this square pops up, starts popping up. It's kind of like a twist fold and this paper is going to go first around this edge of the square and then that edge of the square. Just get that precision right. So that's one on each side and then the second one. Okay, and then you can look at this from the other side. You can see we want to push these into mountain folds. And once we've done that, we've basically collapsed this molecule 
which is actually the molecule for my variation rather than um, the Briggs model by Ilan. But um, this is just a slight variation and you'll see um, in a second, I think, why I did this variation. So now you've got this collapsed and you've got nice precision. So why did I do this? I actually wanted to, to show you that um, you cannot put two of these molecules together. So here's two and you cannot put them together like this. Now if you put it like this then we have another molecule like this to add here. You will see that there will be shapes that are not filled. Um, and this is kind of because you're offsetting and when you're offsetting you have to think about the shape about the molecules a bit more. Basically this doesn't work because if you put these two together then these creases are not aligned. So what I did is I took one of these um, crease patterns and I simply took the mirror image. So you can see here it's kind of um, turning counterclockwise and here it's turning clockwise. And it's simply a mirror image. And because of that, if you align the two crease patterns, you can see that this crease aligns, this crease aligns, and this crease aligns. So when you're sorting out uh, the molecules and how to assemble them, you can actually just look at the crease patterns rather than sticking them together and thinking about how it fits together. Just you know, check that creases align. And you can also do this with the, the green molecules where I said offsetting might work or might not work. And I believe probably you won't be able to match up all the creases because you'll need to really do all of them. You can see on this side, all of them match up. On this side, all of them match up. I mean, obviously it's symmetrical, so they're all going to match up. Um, so this is one of the observations. This is a, a symmetrical um, molecule. It, it looks the same on all four corners. Um, so when you assemble this, it's again a square, right? Uh, seven by seven makes a square of three by three by two. And um, I guess now I have to assemble the last molecule here too. So I'm just going to show that again. Just have to check where the creases need to go. Is that it? This is the center and then I need to go this way around. Just always have to check that I go uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. Other than that, the pattern is very easy to pre-crease. Because basically you have a central square right here and then you're just adding these creases all around, always starting in one corner of that central square and then making a 45 degree angle across two diagonals of such small grid squares. So with that done... Oh, so by the way, <laughs> I turned around the paper and pre-creased um, on this side because this um, not kind of scoring, it's not really scoring, but this kind of slight pre-creasing um, is more like a valley fold and I want it to be valley folds on this side. So that's why I turned around the paper. And then when I do the pre-creasing now, the paper wants to go exactly in that location because the paper is weakened there. And uh, paper usually um, makes a fold where, you know, there's a weakness. And this is actually something that is very often used in, in origami, um, where you have edges or you have pre-creasings or, um, 
or um, several layers rather than fewer layers to to ensure and to make easier that a model uh, collapses in the right way and the new creases go in the correct location. And, and if that's the case, then getting precise, beautiful models is um, much easier than if you don't have that. And just collapsing that molecule. Now, I later want to show you how this works if we work um, on one sheet um, and combining several molecules. And I'm, I haven't pre-creased that. I have pre-creased the grid because that's boring. I'm going to tell you a bit about pre-creasing grids still, but it's still quite boring. So, you know, if you're watching a video or something, you can pre-crease grids along the way. Uh, flights are great for that. I've done a lot of pre-creasing on um, flights to the US and stuff like that. Because um, if you're in the plane for 12 hours or so, you've got a lot of time where you can't do a lot of useful stuff. Except for sleep and watch movies. Read a book. So now I've got four and I'm actually going to steal one of these clips here because you can see this is somewhat falling apart and um, this is partly I guess because I haven't done the creases strong enough but if that happens you can also simply um, fix these two layers together that's all it needs and then the molecule stays in the shape I want it to. Just stealing this from the other model I showed you before. Okay, so then you can see now this is very stable. And I'm going to do that for the other ones too. You can you can use other things. I like these because they're quite strong. I've heard other people say they don't like them because they're so strong and there's a risk of it leaving marks on the paper. Um, there's also like wooden um, clothes pins, like um, small ones, tiny ones, and uh, some people prefer those. Or you could use paper clips, but those um, almost definitely leave a mark on the paper. And I think these are quite nice to handle. And luckily there's exactly the right amount of clips on that other model. So now you can see, um, whereas before it felt apart kind of like this molecule, uh, this model is now quite stable. So it doesn't need those clips anymore because I let it rest for about a day and that was sufficient. This is, by the way, Tant. Um, Tant, is really <clears throat> Tant is a really nice paper that's available online. It's, um, it's widely used in, in origami and I really like it. It's, it comes in, in hundreds of colors. I've, I've got one pack with 100 colors actually, but uh, I believe there's even more. And um, the, the paper is very nice to fold with, um, especially for tessellations. So for tessellations, I really like using elephant hide. I really like using um, tent. And I really like using uh, translucent papers like um, glassine um, or um, pergamine, that's what you call it too. Um, or bread wrap, or you could also try maybe baking pa uh, paper. I haven't tried those, but I've heard that people, you know, do awesome stuff with that too. So anyway, um, I got distracted by the binder clips. So now if you put these together, um, it looks like this. And now one interesting thing to notice is that if you put four together, I'm trying to kind of fake this with the binder clips, you'll see that um, 
on both sides the creases here align, on both sides the creases align, um, same in the other direction. So this, um, these four molecules assembled to one molecule actually um, doesn't, uh, can just be assembled several, several times uh, because all of the creases are kind of in the same direction that you can just add a second one, right? This one matches up with this one, this one matches up with this one, um, and so on. Um, so, so if you have a molecule that has those properties, you don't need to mirror image it or do anything special with it. And another comment, of course you can com combine different molecules as long as, uh, you know, they have the basic properties of afterward you can fill the whole space, the creases match up, um, and all of that. So, um, how do we proceed next? Oh yes, so I wanted to tell you about um, this being my variation, and um, and this is a bricks by Ilan Garibi, and this is my variation. Now you'll see that the bricks, right, this is a brick, and this is a brick. Um, the size of the bricks is different, um, and accordingly the spacing on this side is different. Now, it's a matter of taste which you like better, but um, let me tell you what the difference in the molecules between these two is. So basically, I am going to have to take apart a bit of this. It's still going to be quite stable with just two, and also, even just in these couple of seconds or um, minutes, um, the models have already remembered the shape a bit more. So if you put these together, turn them around, this is not quite on the crease, that's there, uh, then you can see that the brick we form is one, two, three, four by two, just like in this model, one, two, three, four by two. So, in, in Ilan's um, bricks, you actually have one by three, and here we go, that's three and by one, of course. So, I just pushed together the molecules so that they overlap by one. Can you see this? Before I had it like this, and I just overlapped it by one. And this is the molecule that Ilan uses. So I'm going to um, just take these apart and then just pull this apart. And basically what happens is that one row on each side is removed. This means that um, the molecule isn't symmetrical anymore. Um, but that's okay, like it, it doesn't have to be. And um, when you assemble this, then you can, um, you can just use six by six. And then the resulting molecule that's folded in kind of doesn't have this area and that area, and thus is kind of two by two and still too high and that can also be used to fill a space obviously so um, let's see I mean we can just cut this off to simulate this and I just have to be careful to uh, cut off the right areas so that's one and that's two. I haven't prepped any others, so I better don't mess this up. And second one. Now I believe if I cut this off like that, again going to the top and the right,
that. And you can see these match up. And now collapsing this works just like before, except that um, now it's a different shape. So once you've cut these two off, then you can put these together and they fit like that. Okay, so what does this correspond to? This corresponds to aligning the molecules like this, right? So um, when you have one molecule and you want to have a crease pattern for several, basically what you can do is you can draw several copies of these and then assemble them. You can, for example, do this on the computer too, especially if you want to do more elaborate stuff. And um, I'll have a PDF ready for you that you can download and have a look at where I um, show both of these molecules and then what the crease pattern looks like when you assemble four. And when you have four, obviously, you can just chunk together even more. So next, let's see. How do we go from this uh, to this, right? So here you can see I added one, two, three, four by four molecules. And here I added five by five. Both of these are done on a 32 um, division grid, square grid. And uh, let's see, how do I best do this? Can I just use a sheet of paper? And I guess I have to write quite big. So if we have a six by six molecule and we have 32 divisions, um, then we can fit in uh, five of these six by six molecules because five times six is 30. And, um, and then you have 30 um, plus two. So the, the crease pattern or the molecule here is asymmetrical so that when you collapse it, you can see that, um, let's let this collapse correctly, it doesn't look the same on these two sides and those two sides. So if you actually <laughs> on, the, on the borders, just on the borders, use the symmetrical module, you'll get a nicer finishing. So that's why actually 31 makes a lot of sense. And here I used a 32 grid. So you can see, imagine this line being um, cut off and this one being cut off. And then you have a symmetrical shape again. Um, with 30, it would look quite cut off. Um, I actually do uh, prefer <laughs> working with the divisions I fold. So when I did this, I just said, actually, I'm going to leave that one on there um, rather than cutting one off. Um, I, I learned about this model and also a lot about this tessellation stuff and the molecules um, on in at the Italian convention um, this, this winter 2010, or I guess it was still autumn. And... Um, it made me think a lot more about tessellations and the techniques behind it. And that's why I wanted to really make this video because I think it's very interesting. So now for this one, um, I'm again on a 32 grid. So you've got a seven by seven molecule and you've got 32 divisions. So that means you can fit on four because seven times four makes 28, right? So now you've still got, um, four spaces left and this is already symmetrical but with four you can work and just add um, two additional untouched squares to each side and then it again is symmetrical so again i could have cut off four and then you'd again have a symmetrical shape but this actually gives you a nice border so i think a lot of people would prefer cutting off um, that one strip to get 31 by 31. But um, in this case, I think a lot of people may agree that this actually gives it a nice frame. 
So um, talking about folding divisions, uh, I mean, square grids aren't too hard to fold. You can always fold um, edge to edge uh, to get a half. So anything that's a, a power of two is easy. So, but what if you actually want to fold other divisions? For example, I folded um, a 24 by 24 grid here. So, so basically, <laughs> Um, oh gosh, uh, I don't really want to know whether I want to go into these um, mathematics, simple mathematics, but still mathematics. But anyway, any, any number can be divided into prime factors. Prime factors, um, basically this means that you, um, you take a number and write it down as a multiplication where each of the multiplicators, is that what it's called, is a prime number. And a prime number is basically something that you can't um, divide by anything without getting a remainder except for dividing by itself or one. So um, 32 is 2 by 2 by 2 by 2, 2, 4, 8, 16 by 2, 2 to the 5. Um, so you just have to fold in half basically five times and you're, you're ready to go. Um, five it's not really five times, you know, because you have to fold in half and then each half you have to fold in half. So uh, there you go. Now for the 24 grid, 24 is three times eight and eight is two to the three. Um, so for this case, I did um, a third, and then each of the thirds I divided into eight. And why did I do this? Because um, folding into eighths is easy, and folding into thirds is harder. So when you do um, strange divisions, always start with the division that's hardest, because you just have to do it once. And then the easier divisions you want to do later. So if you wanted to do a... Um, five times three times two division, maybe two to the three, whatever, I don't even want to figure out what this is. I'd first do the five because I think it's the hardest. Then I do the thirds on each of the fifths and then do a um, eighths on each of the fifteenths that I get from that. Um, it depends on um, on which divisions you can work with easiest, but two is very easy, three is fairly straightforward, five is okay too, seven too, but, but some, you know, get awkward. The other way of doing this is um, if you need a division <coughs> um, of 63, for example, you might just go for a 64 and then cut one off and get 63. Um, sometimes this is not going to be convenient. For example, if you wanted to do a 65 division, I'm sure you don't want to fold a 128 division and then cut 63 off, unless maybe you can use that for a different project. So um, that's with square divisions and kind of sorting out how to get there. Obviously, um, dividing um, equally applies to triangle grids or any other grid you might want to fold. So I did a 24 grid because, um, let's take another scratch paper. So I did a 24 because I wanted to have three molecules on there because I thought that was probably interesting to see not just how it works on the, the edges but also kind of in the center of the paper. And um, 7 by 7 fits nicely into 24, because 7 times 3 um, is 21, so that leaves us with 3 left over, so it's not going to be quite symmetrical. And 6 by 6 um, fits into 24 too, and I'm actually not sure whether I should use uh, 4 or just 3 molecules. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So how about I use this paper here and first going to put this away for a second. Should have done that a long time ago. So um, Ilan Garibi um, had blue tack with him at the convention and what he did is he put small markers where the center of the molecules are. So basically marking this central square 
or um, with these um, molecules um, he took this spot just because if you have that one square marked it's quite easy to add the other creases. And again I'm just going to add the di diagonal creases and the other ones I'm just going to push into the right shape while collapsing. Um, it might be easier um, to pre-crease it a bit but we'll see how we get along. So if we are, we're going to do the seven by seven first, I think. So we've got three left over and I think I'll do two on one side and three on the other. So I'm just going to mark this because this is just a, um, this is just a trial piece in any case. So two on the side, two on this side, and then one here again. So this is my 21 by 21 square, I hope. Just not going to count it out. And now you can see there's um, a seven by seven molecule. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I wouldn't do it in that much detail. I wouldn't be drawing anything if I did it by myself. But how are you ever going to understand anything if I don't draw things on, right? So this is one molecule. And this is the center. And then you can jump to the next, right? So what I'd usually do is I figure out the first one and then I know that there's three to the edge. So there's got to be three to the edge again, three to the edge, three and the next one and so on. So three, another three, and three, another three, so um, I did use masking tape uh, when I did this one because um, it doesn't make it easier to, um, to, <laughs> to see where those squares are so that you don't add the incorrect creases. So I've got all of these now um, and as I said, you could use blue, blue tack, you could use uh, masking tape like I did. Anything that can easily be removed and is not going to damage the paper, essentially. You could also use um, a pencil and, and then uh, erase it again, but that too might damage the paper. Um, or maybe you're just interested in one side and then it doesn't really matter too much. And, and then basically what you do is uh, you want to crease uh, the crease pattern. So uh, the first one, it doesn't really matter which direction I go. Like this. And then the second one obviously has to go the other way around. So rather than going counterclockwise, this time I have to go clockwise. And um, I understand that if you don't have as much experience with this, then it may be hard for you to understand how, which way to go. So um, don't worry about it too much. Um, you, can, you can always use pencil in the beginning and, and try that out. Oops, that went wrong. And, um, and sort out how everything, where everything has to go. Actually, this one's totally wrong. I haven't been paying attention. Oh, that's bad. You're not even going to understand what's going on here, are you? Um, neither am I. So, this one's the right one. And this one's the right one. And this one's the right one. And this one's the right one. That makes sense. So I hope those are all okay. Those are twisted the same way and those are twisted the same way. So that looks fine. So if you look at these 45 degree angles, you'll see that there are uh, several of those creases that you need. Um, if you crease it all the way through, you are going to have a harder time collapsing. So, um, but what you can do is if you don't do this pre-creasing method, it's much easier to um, add all of these three at the same time because the paper is already in the same, in the right shape. 
So you'd kind of pre-crease this one, pre-crease that one, and pre-crease this one. And in that case, what I do is I kind of figure out um, how many diagonals I have to crease and then how many I jump over. So for example here, it's one, two, three, four, five. And then two again, and then one, two, three, four, five, not, and then two again. Uh, this is especially helpful if you're doing like a lot of molecules at once. I will, I think, um, just add all of these. with the bone folder. Now, Ilan said <laughs> uh, that you can never actually fold a tessellation without making some incorrect pre-creasing. Um, and I think that's often true. I think it's quite hard when you do very big tessellations that you get all the creases correct. Now, the good news is that usually it doesn't really show. Um, I did make, I think, one or two incorrect pre-creasings on this one. Um, if by looking at this he immediately located, you know, congratulations, because I'd have to take a long look to find this myself. Um, it doesn't really show. So don't worry too much if you do add an incorrect crease. Don't just throw the paper away or be frustrated. Just continue. It is going to be a bit of a challenge to then not, you know, use that crease as an incorrect reference. But um, you could, for example, mark it in some way to ensure that you ignore it and don't work with it and don't mess up because of that. In general, making mistakes is okay. Do not believe that I don't do any mistakes. I make lots of mistakes. I often need to start a model over because I did not understand a step correctly or I was not careful enough. I mean, it doesn't happen a lot, um, as in every second time, but it does happen often enough and I'm not ashamed of it. Um, and you shouldn't be either. I mean, I get a lot of questions too, where people ask, can I use this paper? Can I use that? Can I use this glue? Can I, whatever. And, and usually my answer is always just give it a try. I mean, seriously, just give it a try. I actually don't know whether it will work. Most of the stuff um, that works for me, I just found out by trying out. If you want to know about the paper, um, you can just get a small sample and if you like that sample then you can buy more of the paper. Um, usually the materials used for origami are quite cheap. Glue is cheap, paper is cheap unless you get specialist paper of course. I mean some paper can be quite expensive but you have to be a freak like me to buy that kind of stuff. And I think I've as good as finished this. And I also think I'm not going to be doing subtitles for this video because I'm talking way too much and it's going to be a very long video. And I'm sure you don't want me spending hours and hours on doing subtitles that I could also be doing a video for. Uh, by the way, do you want to give me a comment on where did I put it? I found this super cute model. It's two sheets, one sheet for the heart in the middle and this one. And it's uh, not a flat surface, it actually stands. Thought about demonstrating it for Valentine's Day. What do you think? Do you like this model? I love it. It's done by Stacy. Stacy, what's uh, what's the surname? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, I'll add it later. And it's, I think, super cute. And thinking about doing a video. So, you know, give me your thoughts. Sorry for the distraction. I think I'm done by now. And I'm just going to um, strengthen these creases. 
the mountain folds start in this diagonal, then they go up to here for one molecule, and then the other one. So you're going to be adding <coughs> a lot of long creases. So there is another one, and there is another one, and so on. I'm not going to draw in all of these, especially because the red pen is quite messy. Hope it's not going to show too much now. So that adding these creases is um, not too bad. So let's see, if these are mountain folds, then I want to do the mountain fold here too. Yes. Never uh, ever think <laughs> that I know where I'm going when I start these things. I just figure it out as I go along. And again, in some ways this helps, because if I need to figure it out while I'm explaining it to you, then chances are I'm going to explain it in more detail. And sometimes I get criticized for explaining in too much detail, but hey, I think too much detail uh, is not really a, a bad thing. You can always jump over sequences if you think it's boring. For example, this, I'm just pre-creasing and talking. And uh, is that really interesting? Probably not. But maybe it is. Maybe it is. Oh, I've gotten sick of pre-creasing. Um, so what I'm going to do is just um, start collapsing. How's that? So, um, you can kind of see these pre-creasings, but just for reference, I believe I'll draw in these squares that are in the center of the molecules of the variation of bricks that um, I did just because I wanted to have a symmetrical molecule rather than a non-symmetrical one. And then I'm just, did you, do you remember that when I had this molecule kind of said I pinch these and then kind of push it together? And you can see how nicely that goes because I pre-creased these quite precisely. Um, in videos when I crease, I never uh, get that same precision. But I'm just going to pinch these, and this is kind of like doing the pre-creasing, just that it's a bit more targeted. And pinch these. And you will notice that you're going to be working on the collapsing for quite a bit where you think like, I'm going nowhere, and then suddenly it all falls into place. Um, at least that's the case for me. So I'm just going to also pre-crease these ones. So for example, this one is kind of, can you see that? It's kind of turning a bit, and that's all I really want in this case. Just want to have this collapsing a bit. And I understand, I know that um, in this video, in some ways, <laughs> I'm being precise um, and detailed about some things rather than others. And I hope you'll, you know, be able to follow along, because Okay, what can I say? If you've got a diagonal here, it stops in this point, then you have a mountain fold. Again, if you have the diagonal here, the mountain fold is here. So the mountain fold goes through a corner of that square. It's kind of an extension of this, and it goes a bit further. You can see that. Um, so, if you're not quite sure where to put the mountain folds, always look at the diagonals you have and then take it from there.
the diagonals um, are a great reference, or this, the, the small squares, you know that I put a dot on right now, are also a good <coughs> reference. And as I promised, it kind of looks like I'm getting nowhere, but I am. I promise you. I'm just um, getting these into the right shape. Uh, I think my husband may be waking up. <laughs> Do these in the mornings so that I, um, when I, I usually record these videos while uh, my husband's sleeping, because obviously when he's awake, um, I, I want to spend some time with him rather than with the video. Does that make sense? Nothing against origami, but uh, people are important too. Especially the loved ones. So I usually do these in the early mornings. I'm a, uh, I'm a person that doesn't need that much sleep and that likes getting up early. I never use an alarm clock. Just wake up. Not even know why I tell you this. Anyway, might be that soon we'll have some background no noise. And I'm hoping not. This is another reason why I do it in the early mornings, because I don't really want to have background noise here. Okay, so this is starting to take on shape. Um, and basically the creases are where they need to go. And you can see that here, um, this is where the bricks are going to um, emerge. And those are the ones that I haven't really pre-creased yet. Um, those are, uh, is this, this is the right molecule, uh, these are the bricks, right? And uh, to collapse, you don't really need those bricks to be quite as defined. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking these two and pressing them together, taking these two and pressing them together, and then maybe starting to let those bricks, um, those folds for the bricks emerge. And I think this one I didn't pre-crease, so I'm just going to do that now. <coughs> you will be able to tell which ones aren't pre-creased or aren't pre-creased strong enough, because the paper doesn't just pop into place. And then I need to twist this again. Um, I'm using, in, in the videos, I, I try to use very plain paper. So I usually use um, kami, origami paper it's often called. And kami is not the best for tessellations, it's quite thin and not as stiff as I like it to be for tessellations, so um, it gets a bit harder. But I figure a lot of you don't have a specific paper, and then it's good to show you that it even works when you use some very basic paper. So I'm just pushing these together while I'm rambling about this and that. And I think I might start using some binder clips. So you remember that when we twisted, we wanted this edge to go around two edges of the square. So it needs to go kind of this far. If you just twist around um, once, you change the crease pattern too, of course, because then the diagonal crease isn't too long anymore, but just one long. Um, then you get a model that's called cubes, and I don't have it lying around here, but I can add a picture to the video. And that is also going to be diagrammed in Ilan Garibi's upcoming book which I'm really very excited about. I'm always excited about books. I have 
lots of origami books actually looking at my shelf. I haven't updated um, <laughs> my library actually because I got books for my birthday and for Christmas and I actually had someone asking me which ones I got. Maybe I'm going to do a, um, a video telling you which books I have. There's lots, believe me. Um, would you be interested in that? I don't know. Um, asking some questions here because this is such a long video and I guess I can't stop talking. <laughs> um, so you can leave comments answering to those questions, you know, what about the Valentine? Do you like it? Um, what about this style of video which kind of explains um, a way of doing tessellations in general on the example of Ilan Garibi's uh, bricks because this technique that I try to explain you can be applied to many other um, molecules. Um, so I wonder, you know. I think I'm not going to show you uh, the collapsing of the bricks itself because uh, it's basically the same. Um, you just have to, um, you know, use the other molecule. And I'm not sure whether it's worth showing that or whether it's just going to be boring. And I think it will just be boring. And I think it will give me too much of a chance to just fill you with uh, not interesting information that's just going through my head at that moment. Okay, added clips here and I'm just going to press down in the center, hoping that these will all go on the right creases. So you have to be sure that all of these valley foes are pressed in, else it will not collapse. So, how's that? I know it's not the tidiest fold, but um, it should give you an idea of how this is then collapsed. Basically, you want to do the crease pattern for each small molecule, kind of press it into shape by itself, and then collapse the whole thing. Um, and it will only really be stable once you've collapsed all of them. And then um, this is the other side. And what I do like to do is then take a bone folder because it's thinner than my fingers and check whether any of these need to be fixed. For example, here the crease didn't quite pop into place. Same here, same here. And then again on this side, just getting those bricks into a nice shape, just popping them into place, not adding creases, just pushing the paper to where it's supposed to go. Um, I also do this with these small squares here, but that's a bit of a more lengthy process. Um, but the thing is, if you do that, the finishing model is going to be nicer it's not really worth it for this one because it's not a display model and as with most of the models I do in my videos I just throw them away afterwards. So um, there you go. Now if we remove these again without having let it rest um, it's basically stable. Um, it depends on which paper you use. So for the tent, uh, I think because it's much heavier the paper, um, it did need a bit more time to actually, you know, rest and get used to the shape. Um, but this too is kind of falling apart a bit. And um, 
this this paper doesn't quite have the same properties, so I think fixing it for a longer time wouldn't help that much. But there you go. Uh, this is my variation of bricks. Um, this is bricks by Ilan Garibi. Um, I hope uh, this video taught you something about molecules and how they uh, can be put together to do tessellations and um, a bit about divisions, a bit uh, about precision and how you might do off-grid uh, creases to get them nice and precise. Um, and just, you know, a guide through how you can attempt other tessellations, not just the ones I present in a video.